Hi everyone, my name is Jason of the blog Jason D. Moore Photography and this time around I'm going to take two two-dimensional images and give them a 3D look, give it some depth like it were in a magazine or in a paperback book. So let's get started. We're going to go up to File and Place and select our first image. We will place our images as opposed to just open them and, and drag them in as a new layer because when we were working with the warp tool later on uh, we may want to go back and tweak it just a little bit and that gives us the flexibility without worrying about uh, affecting the pixels of the image so with our first image open we're going to hold down the shift and the option or alt key and drag from one of the corners to set the size of our image once we have the size we want that's about right for this particular usage and we're going to click the check mark to confirm Next, we're going to go to File, Place, and select our second image. And once again, holding the Shift and the Option or Alt key, drag from the corner to resize the image. Now you'll see that these two images are, are obviously not the same size. So what we'll do is we will enlarge the second one so that it's larger than the first, and commit the change. It's not as vital with this particular image that uh, the edges uh, look a certain way because it's a close-up already. So what we're going to do is with the command or the control key pressed we're going to click on the thumbnail of our first image and click on the layer mask icon on the bottom of the layer panel to create a layer mask for that layer. Now because we're using smart objects you'll notice that the layer mask and the layer itself is not locked together. So if we were to select the thumbnail and move it around you'll see that the layer mask stays put and the image itself moves independent. So what we're going to do instead is to right click on that layer and convert to a smart object. This way when we move it around it all sticks together. With the shift key pressed we're going to slide our two layers so that their inside edges line up like so. Next Hold Command or Control T to open Free Transform and click on the Warp button. First thing we're going to do is click on this handle here and drag straight up right along that line. You can already see the page starting to curl a little bit. Next we'll drag this handle straight down to give it that wave-like effect, make it seem like it's still sitting on the table right here. Mm -hmm. Up at the top, we'll do the same thing. Try and mimic that same move. Straight up with this one, and down just a little bit for that one. And when you're done, hit the check mark once, and you're all set. Now, switching to the other layer, again, hold Command or Control T, switch to the warp mode. This time, drag this inside one up and the other one down, this one up and this other one down and click OK. I see as I'm looking at this that I don't particularly like the way this is starting to curve up right over here and over here and as well as on the bottom so I'm going to hit Command or Control T again go back to the warp tool and you'll see that our settings are still intact from what they were before. I think what I want to do is end up pushing this one just up so that it's only slightly below a hor strictly horizontal. Or maybe something like that would work a little better. And click the check mark. That looks a little cleaner to me. So we'll move back over to this one. Command or Control T warp button and just messing with it a little bit. Again, this is all to your taste if anyway, so whatever looks best for you. With that done, our next step will be to add a gradient to each of these layers. What we're going to do is create a new layer on top, select our gradient tool, and make sure we have our foreground 
to transparent gradient selected. Make sure our foreground color is white and then we're going to select the reflected gradient. I tend to like uh, light coming from the upper left. I don't know why, it just always seems to work out that way. So we know that the light will hit more right along here than it would on this side of the curve. So what we do is while holding the shift key down, we simply click and drag to the right and release. And you'll see that gives us a little highlight right there. Obviously it's a little too strong, so if we lower the opacity down to around, somewhere around about 30 to 40 percent, it will give us a nice little highlight to make it look like it is a little more real. Likewise, select the other layer, create a new layer on top of that, and still with the same uh, gradient selected, I'm going to click, hold the shift key down, and drag, and then lower the opacity to about somewhere around 38, 40 percent, something like that. Because I know that the background we will be using is darker, the gradients we just created will show up both above and below the pages that we have been working with. In order to fix this, we must create a clipping group. So what we do is go over to our Layers panel, hold down the Option or Alt key, and click between the two layers that we want to work with. You'll see the pointer change to two circles and a little arrow, and once you click, there will become a new little icon next to the layer thumbnail indicating that this gradient will only be acting on the layer directly beneath it. Once again, hold down your Option and Alt key and click between the, the Starry Night image and the gradient above that to create a clipping group there as well. The next thing we're going to do is add a drop shadow in order to give this a little bit of depth. You can do that by either clicking on the layer style icon at the bottom of our layers panel or simply double clicking within an open area on one of the layers. I'm going to click on the, the words drop shadow and just a tip whenever you're working within the layer style dialog box simply clicking on the box next to it will only turn that effect on or off but you have to actually click on the name in order to have all the options available to you. So what I'm going to do is increase the opacity a little bit, maybe bump the distance up and the size just a little bit to give us a nice drop shadow. Just give, take a look. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to click OK. Because I want that same drop shadow to appear on the left hand image, left page, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on the icon within the layer and simply drag to the layer I want it to end up on, like so. You'll notice that the drop shadow of the left hand page is now on the right hand page, almost making it look like they're two separate images, which they are, as opposed to one single unit. The reason for this is because this left hand layer is on top of the right hand layer in the layers panel and we need to shift that. So simply click on that layer, hold down the control or the command key, and click on the gradient layer above it so that they travel together, and simply drag below the Starry Night layer on the right. And you'll see that fixes the seam so that it looks like the drop shadow is applied to the whole image. Next, I'm going to just make that everything a little more centered on the page. And I'm going to turn on our background layer so that it looks like it's actually laying on a surface of a table. And just to give you a good, nice, uh, clean view, I'm going to hit the F key once, twice, three times, and then hit the Tab key so you can see on a nice black background as a nice presentation view. Give that a try as well. Hope you guys like this uh, quick little tutorial. Give it a try. Let me know if you come up with anything cool. Once again, my name is Jason of the blog Jason D. Moore Photography. You can find more information at www.jasondmore.com slash blog or on my YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com slash jasondmorephoto. Hope you guys had fun with this one. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.